All right, Shalom Akim, Shalom Yashirala. First off, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, Hashem And I want to give double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. All right, so I'm going to start. No, I'm going to start off with. Uh, let me see here. Let me go to Romans 13. All right, Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of the Most High. The powers that be ordained of the Most High. All right, so we have powers that are set over us. That means we can't try and overthrow these power, uh, these, these powerhouses. We can't try and overthrow, you know, kingdoms. We can't try and overthrow anything. All right, everything is ordained by the Most High. And it won't be cast down until the Most High says so. You can't go against the will of the Most High, you know. So it says, uh, Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of the Most High. And they resist shall receive to themselves damnation, you know. So resist does not mean to not receive, you know, um, the RFID chip. That means you have to take it. No. That is, that's not what it's talking about. I mean, it's don't try and overthrow government that was set up by the Most High because it's not going to succeed unless the Most High deems it that way. All right. Same thing with Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great didn't go overthrowing governments because it was in his own will that to do it. But it was prophecy for Alexander the Great to do that, you know. So all these things that happened throughout history they're not they're not happening by their own way but by the way of the most high and that's in uh, Daniel chapter 4 you know which actually I have my sword right here let me get that you know this is Daniel chapter so lucky I was already there Daniel chapter 4 and verse let me see. It was, um, going to this one, Zeus. It's another. Oh, that's five. Salakia. This is Daniel chapter four. In verse 16, let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know, all right, that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men, you know. So this kingdom was given unto Edom, Esau, Edom, you know, and that doesn't mean that we shall learn how to, you know, do martial arts so we can fight against him and, you know, learn how to shoot, bury 50 cows and, you know, work out and get stronger so that uh, a desert eagle won't won't knock us back so much. You know, that's not that's not what that's talking about, man. You know, so Esau Edom was set up by the Most High through spirit, through the spirit of prophecy, you know. Which actually I wanted to get this one, but. Let me get Second Ezra chapter six verse nine, you know, because it's beautiful how Yahabashim Yahushai set everything up, and people still don't seem to believe, man, you know, but that's okay, because when the Most High comes back, people are gonna be afraid. They're gonna start calling on the Most High, and He's not gonna answer them, you know. Because it wasn't given to him. It was given to the prophets. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. All right. Now that's a foreshadow of things that were to come. All right. Because Jacob was holding on to Esau right after another. So the birth of one and the end of one was the beginning of another. You see? It says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right. The hand of a man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other question, Esdras, ask thou not. 
So that means right after one kingdom comes another one, man. You know? So the kingdom that's set up right now of Esau, Edom, was set up by the Most High. You know? And this kingdom is not righteous, man. This kingdom is is, is all kinds, all manner of wickedness. You know? So this is in my sword again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verse 1. Why wise judge will instruct his people in a government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the of the of his of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man ruleth the city is such as are all they that dwell therein. You know, so we know that this place is not righteous, this place is wicked, you know. So let favor be shown unto the wicked. And that's what's happening right now, you know. But now things are speeding up through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So this kingdom is being brought down spiritually, man. You know, the way of, of, of the prophets. All right. So what happened over here in Odessa, Texas is nothing but judgment, man. You know, and it, they may seem like innocent bystanders. And we don't know exactly why the Most High had chosen for those people to, to be gone. But those numbers are increasing of, of, of amount of people that were killed by this uh, uh, murderer. All right. By this thief, you know. But that's what wanted. That's what I wanted to get over here in Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter thirty-nine, verse twenty-eight. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, and this is in the so-called apocrypha, which means hidden knowledge. All right, and this hidden knowledge is going to be revealed in the last days. And guess what? It's being revealed right now. It says these be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes in the time of destruction. They pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. All right. So if you know anything about what's been happening in this world. All right. Right now, there's there's a hurricane over there in, in close to Florida. All right. I believe it's on the east eastern coasts of Florida. There's a hurricane. Uh, what was the name? Darius? No, not Darius. Uh Ah, so lucky. I can't remember the name of the, the hurricane, which really that, you know what? I believe that hurricane's name. Uh, not there is a mean. So lucky. Let me see. Let me look it up. Hurricane Dorian. All right. So if we look up the name Dorian. You know, the most high. He's far out, man. All right. Dorian. Meaning, check this out. Mm, let me see, translations, definitions. Dorian is upholder of the good, all right? And, and judgment of the Most High is what? The judgment of the Most High is good, you know? There was another part, you know, because that name Dorian comes from the name can also be written uh, the Senate of Doris from Doris. Man, I know what it means, you know, but I want to get it just for visual purposes, you know, not just to say. Let me see. Dorian meaning son of Cause that's the actual meaning of Dorian. Dorian, Cronus, son of himself, Zeus, the husband of fair crown. You know, Dorian basically means son of the sea. All right. So this hurricane is a really strong hurricane. You know, the one that's that's uh coming. So, you know, you have that hurricane that's coming. All right. You also have that shooting that you had over here in Odessa, Texas. And then you have this judgment that just happened a couple of days ago, if not just yesterday. Um, Kevin Hart, the comedian, all right, he just got paralyzed from the neck down, all right? He just got paralyzed from the neck down, you know? And there's been a lot of scandals, a lot of, you know, a lot of things going around about Kevin Hart. And the Most High has chosen to judge Kevin Hart, man. You see, so these things are speeding up, man. These things are coming and they're coming quickly. 
All right, the Most High is not joking, man. You know, he's never been a, a, a joker, you know. So, um, back in Romans 13 and 3, it says, For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Would thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of the Most High to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of the Most High, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You see, so if you do evil, guess what? That execution is going to come forth, man. And it might, might not even come in this lifetime. All right. You might do the wickedness that you do in this lifetime, you know, but spirits always come back. Because he's the father of spirits, not the killer of spirits. All right. So all the spirits go back up to the father. And then when he sees it fit for you to come back down, you come back down and reincarnate, which means to come back in the flesh. All right. Regeneration. All right. To regenerate, to to come back. In the flesh. All right. So you come back in your flesh and that's why you have stillborns and that's why you have. Uh, children with birth defects, all right? That that's why you have children that, that suffer through a lot of wickedness. That's why you have children that are severely beat when they're, they're young and, and they end up dying. You know, you don't know what manner of spirits you are, all right? Not even the prophets them, themselves, which let me get that. Uh, What was that? Manner of spirits. You know, this was the apostles... They were telling Yahweh Shai, you know, should we cast down fire? You know, which was actually Luke. Yeah, it was this one. Uh, Luke 9 and 55. But he turned and rebuked them. All right. Because they asked him. They were, look, see, in 54 it says, And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from the heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? All right. So that's the manner of spirits that the prophets are, man. They have that type of power. All right. But that's why Yahweh Shai turned around and rebuked them. All right. Because it's not given to us just yet, man. We're not supposed to be doing that kind of stuff just yet. It says, but he turned and rebuked them and saying, ye know not what manner of spirits ye are of. All right. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And they went to another village. All right. So right now it's not up to us to destroy. It's not up to us to kill. It's not up to us to do any of that stuff, man. And it's not going to be unrighteous killings. It's going to be righteous. All right? Because the Most High is the father of, of spirits. The Most High's ways are all judgment. The Most High's ways are perfect, as scriptures say. You know? So they don't know what manner of spirits they are. We don't know what manner of spirits we are. We don't know what manner of spirits those people are. You know? So the ones that receive judgment from the Most High, we don't know what they did in their past lives. You know, we don't even know what they did in their current lives, man, because everybody's so secretive. Everybody's secretly wicked. That's why when they wait for the dark time to be wicked, you know. But it says, um, let me see, execute wrath upon that doeth evil. Verse five, Romans 13 and five, wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. All right. So we need to be subject unto the most high because when he chooses wrath to come then wrath will come and if he uses you to execute that wrath then you will all right but first we have to work we have to work to get to that point it says for this cause pay ye tribute also for they are god's ministers attending continually upon this very thing all right so the ones that are continuing uh uh Upon this very thing is this truth, laboring for this truth, you know. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to who custom is due, or to whom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. All right, and who who is all honor, glory, and praise to Yahabashim Yahushai. All right, who do we fear the most high Yahweh? You know. So the most high is the one. That works all these things, man. It's not up to us to do it, but up to the Most High. You know? 
So from there, let me go to the book of Luke. Chapter 11. It's going to be verse. Let me start off at verse. Um, let me start off at verse 21. Luke 11 and 21, it says, When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcometh him, all right, and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. You see? So if the Most High decides to have somebody rule over you, then that's who you have to set or or, or, or or allow, you know. But who is our armor? The Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right? Um, in the book of Psalms, when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, in him will I trust. Why? Because nobody can go above the Most High. The Most High is the highest, all right? The Most High, that's why you call him the Most High, you know? It says... He that is not with me is against me. And that's something that you should always remember. Oh, but he was so young. Well, if he wasn't with the Most High, then he's against the Most High. If he wasn't with Yahweh Shai, then he's he's against Yahweh Shai. Oh, but he didn't even give him a chance. Not knowing that that spirit has came back hundreds and hundreds of times over and over and over. And every single time he, he goes against the Most High. Plus, the Most High is the one that shaped you in the womb. You know? The Most High is the one that creates you, man. So he knows you before you even know yourself. You know? That's why he hated Esau and, and he loved Jacob. Because from the womb, he already knew what manner of people they were. That was a prophecy. All right? He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth. You see? So if you're not gathering the flock, then you're actually scattering. It may seem like you're not doing much. Oh, but, you know, this uh, teenager, you know, I don't know her name, but she passed away in the shooting. And seemingly, she seems like an innocent young woman. But really, what do you know about that woman? What do you know about these dead people, man? You don't know anything about them. You don't know anything about the spirit that was inside of them. You don't know if the spirit of one of them was worse than the one that killed them. All right. And that's why Yahweh Shai said, fear not. All right. Fear not the one that can kill the body. You see, Matthew 10 and 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. So who should we fear? The Most High, man. Because it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Most High. Because the Most High is the one that allows all these things to happen. All right. Nobody goes against the most high. The most high is the one that destroys man. All right. And fear not them which kill the body, you know, or destroy the body. What happened to Kevin Hart? He was he was injured and he was paralyzed from the neck down. So Kevin Hart shouldn't be fearing the people. He should have been fearing the most high and he would have been kept alive. He would have been kept whole. All right, but are not able to kill the soul. So the most high can break you down to your soul, man. But rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul, body and body in hell. And what does that word hell go back to? The ground, the pit, the grave. All right. Let's click on it. Matthew 28. The word hell is Gehenna. All right, Gehenna, which when you look into Gehenna, it goes back to the vil the Valley of Hinnom, which is a literal place. It was a grave, you know, wherever or not a grave. It used to be where you throw trash and you burn it up, you know, and then Israelites started using it for wickedness and they started throwing, you know, uh, uh, children's bodies in there for sacrifice and and people's bodies for sacrifice, you know. And the Most High said he was going to come back and destroy, all right, destroy the wicked like they just, they sacrificed upon uh, the Valley of Hinnom, which is Gehenna, all right? But that was just a, 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 a similitude of what was to come, 
you know, a foreshadow of what was to come. Not saying that there is an underground place called Gehenna. All right. It says hell is a place of the future punishment called Gehenna. You see or Gehenna of fire. That's not what that's talking about. This was originally a va valley of Hinnom. You see that? Originally a valley of Hinnom. So that means that what? Hell is in Jerusalem, but yet Jerusalem means city of peace. Does that make any sense to anybody? No. Hell does not exist. All right. Hell is a condition. You know? Hell is the grave. All right. It says, where the filth and dead animals of the city were cast out and burned, a fit symbol of the wicked and their future destruction. You see, this isn't something that we're making up. You know? This is a future destruction, man. And what is that destruction? Joel chapter 2. You know? Joel chapter 2 tells you about the ICBM missiles that are coming. The book of Ezra also tells you about the destruction that's coming. The book of Revelations tells you about Babylon the Great being destroyed. All right. The book of, uh, I believe that was Thessalonians, where it tells you, all right, that it's going to melt with fervent heat. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it was actually John. I believe it was John, you know. But that, that judgment is coming, man. You know. Hey, actually, you know what? Let me, mm, actually, let me, let me continue reading on this one. He that receiveth you, receiveth me, and that findeth his life shall lose it. Let me go up a little bit. Yeah, let me start reading from verse 34. Because people seem to think that the Most High and Yahweh Shai are only here for peace, love, and prosperity, man. Which is not true. The Most High is here for his business. You know what? Let me get that in Job. All right. That's the book of Job. Chapter 14 and 15. It says, Thou shalt call, all right, after you die. And you, you know what? Let me read it from verse 14 just for, for the sake of that. It says, 13, Salakia. Job 14 and 13. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me in secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. All right. So what is that talking about? Hide you in the grave. You're dead. All right. His wrath passes by, you know, which is up here on earth. It says, and remember, all right, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time to what? To come back into the earth and remember me. That means look into your inward parts. You know, which let me look up that word grave in Job 13 and or Job 14 and 13. No, it's not 14 and 13. All right, let's look that up. It's not you. All right, let's look up that word grave. And it says. It says Sheol, you see? It says that would hide me in the grave. So the grave is talking about a literal grave, man. All right. And Sheol was known as, you know, hell or the underworld is what people call it. But it's really just the grave. You know, it's really just a pit. When you bury somebody, you put them where? Into the grave, hell, the pit. That's what she all means, man. You know. So let me see if they have it. Nope, they don't have it. Mm -hmm. No, they don't have the the Greek on here. It's a lucky. Um, Job 14 and 13, oh, that thou was hide me in the grave, all right, that means buried, that thou was keep my secret until thy wrath be passed, all right, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me, you know, so coming back into another body, it says, if a man dies, shall he live again? 
all the days of my appointed time will I wait. So now he's going back to, okay, I'm alive and until I die, all right, all the days of my appointed time will I wait. Appointed time is the current life you live because the Most High has already written how many years and how many months and how many days and how many hours and how many minutes and how many seconds you're going to live, all right? It says, thou sh uh, till my change come, you see? So until his change comes after being in the grave, thou shalt call and I will answer thee that will have a desire to do the work of thine hands. So that's what we're supposed to do. All right? Find mercy in the Most High because we're all sinners, man. And how do we find mercy? By submersing ourselves into these scriptures, you know? So going back to the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, what was I in? It was verse 30, yep, verse 34. It says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. You see, so he didn't come here for the, everybody to just have peace and, and be good and be living in wickedness. All right. It says, I came not to send peace, but a sword. That means division between those men that are going to try and follow the law, statutes and commandments, try and follow the word, try and read and study with those men that are just going to be out here in the world and join the world. All right. Using the the world, but not abusing. And these people are, are over abusing the world, man, you know, for their wickedness. All right. So that thing that happened to Kevin Hart, that thing that happened recently. Yes. Yeah, seem, seemingly it's a tragedy. All right. Seemingly it is. But in all reality, it's judgment from the most high. All right. It says, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be of them, shall be they of his own household. And now why is that? Because possibly people are not going to be believing in this truth, man. They're not going to be believing in the harsh things, which that actually brings me to uh, Proverbs. You know, I'm just trying to move through the spirit. Uh, Proverbs have a couple of precepts set up, but you know, all according to the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Shai. So Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 6. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And that's not what Israel wants, man. Israel wants smooth sayings, you know. And that takes me to Isaiah chapter uh, 30 and verse 9. It says that this is a rebellious people lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Most High. All right, because y'all don't want to live in righteousness, man. Y'all don't want to hear that you can't eat pork. Oh, but, you know, that's done away with. It never says that in the scriptures. You can't shave. As for men, you know, men should have beards. Oh, no, but I have to be clean shaved for work. And that's how we know this place is wicked, man. You're making excuses as to why you can't be a follower. Of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, so verse 10, it says, which say to the seers, see not. So they're telling the seers to see not. Who are the seers? And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. That's what you want to hear. And that's why you go to these damn churches every Sunday, all right? And every Wednesday, you go and you hear the word that they have to give, which is nothing but peace and love, man. And that's what Israel wants to hear. They don't want to hear the hard truth because that means you have to stop making damn pork chops. That means you have to stop eating bacon, all right? That means you have to start watching what you eat. That means you have to, you know, uh, uh, stop living in, in, in deliciousness, man. You know, but she that liveth in pleasures is dead while she liveth, as scriptures say. You know, and that's why our people are the way they are, man. And that's why you've been receiving this judgment. All right. That is the judgment of the most high. Prove to me that it says in the scriptures that everybody's going to live in perf everybody's going to be living perfectly fine and war and death is going to continue in the earth forever and everybody's just going to you know continue on lollygagging and doing whatever the hell they want to do it never says that it says righteousness will be established it says the law statutes and commandments are going to be established and is that established in this earth no they go against it man they go con contrary to what the scriptures say you know so that's why it says here that he came to set at variance you know, a uh, uh, certain people and even people of his own household are going to stand against him. Why? Because we're going to stand up for this righteousness. You know, something simple like not eating pork anymore because the scriptures say so. Guess what? My family members look at me like I'm stupid. 
They're looking at, they're looking at me like I'm fucking crazy, man. You know, something simple like that. And pork is actually unhealthy for you, man. You know, I used to have these uh, things in, in, in my in my nails, you know, because I was unclean and, and you grow uh, like a type of fungus, man, when you're unclean. Guess what? After I came into this truth, all of that went away. I wonder why. I wonder why, man. It's because we're not eating unclean foods. Now, granted, we're still going to be eating foods of Gentiles. Not everything is going to be 100% clean. All right. The lettuce is still dirty. You know, you, you have the meat that's still dirty, you know, because the cows are fed the, 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 uh, the bad grass. You know, they're fed bad food. And then the, the cows have it and so on and so forth. So everything really literally is unclean. But that's why it says in, in the book of Judges chapter 5, you know, that we're going to be rehearsing the righteous acts, man. Which let me get that here in my sword, man. You know, because Yahweh Bashim was shy, man. He's, he's not about this this way of life that, that we've been living, you know. We were all blinded at one point. But once you hear this word, man, you can't. You can't close your ears again. You know, once you hear this word, you, you either sealed for death and destruction or you're sealed for salvation, man. All right, so this is uh, Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the place of drawing water. And who are the archers? It's those silos, man, you know, where the ICBM missiles come out of. All right, it says in the in the land of drawing water, which is here in America, there shall be there, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh. And what are the righteous acts? The law, statutes, and commandments, keeping the Passover keeping the Sabbath day holy, all these things, man, you know, that's what's given unto Israel, pursuing after Romans chapter 9. It says, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel, then shall the people of Yahweh go down to the gates. And what are the gates? All right, you have two. One is a straight gate and the other one is not. That straight gate, S-T-R-A-I-T, means hard all right and that's the straight gate that we are in all right going after the way of yahweh which is not easy it's not an easy thing not anybody can do it but that's why there's a pre-election you see and that's why people are going to be turning against you soon man because these things are speeding up so matthew 10 and 37 he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So if you love your life, if you love your mother, if you love your uh, wife, your father, your children, your brothers more than you love Yahweh, guess what? You're not going to be worthy of the kingdom, man. And you're going to be found slacking. All right. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So you should love the most high with all thy heart and above everything else, man. He that taketh not his cross, all right, that means your life that you live, not wear your cross, bear your cross, all right, and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What does that mean? That means seek your own salvation with fear and trembling, all right? He that findeth his life shall lose it, all right? And that's what a lot of people have done. They found their life here in, in, in Babylon, all right, living deliciously and, and, and having boyfriends and having girlfriends and having things of this world and having materialistic things, that doesn't mean you can't have anything that's materialistic. You can, but not being consumed by the world, all right? Using the world, but not abusing. You see? He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And that's how we're losing our life, man. By not going after, oh, I want to be an engineer, which engineering sounds amazing to me, all right? But that's not the lot that was given to me, man. What was given to me was to prophesy and preach and teach this truth. And that's how we lose our lives, man. You know, by going after the way of the most high. And like it says in the book of Corinthians, by the by the way of foolishness of, of preaching, we, we, you know, we save ourselves. We save the people that we love, man. You know, if the Lord wills it. But you see, and that's why it says, and he that receiveth you receiveth me. Why? Because we're doing the work of the Most High. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me, which is who? Yahweh the Most High. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. 
And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. You see, so who, who's righteous? What does it mean to be a right, righteous man and what does it mean to be a sinner? To be a sinner means to live in sin. To be sin, all right, means to break the law, statutes, and commandments, all right? Because sin is a transgression of the law. So to be a righteous man is to follow after the law, statutes, and commandments, but most importantly, to have faith in the one that created us, Yahweh, and in our Savior, Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 42, And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones, all right, a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. You see? So you're going to have people that, yeah, they might do some good things for a prophet, you know, but, but if you continue in the world, all your righteousness will be what? For, uh, uh, forgotten. All the righteousness you did in your life, if you don't dedicate it to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and continue to dedicate that, then guess what? It's going to be forgotten. It's going to be of nothing. Even if you lived 45 years old and, and, and 44 years old and 11 months and, 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 and 22 days, and on the 23rd, it was it was the day of judgment. All right. So in that last day, you, you, you gave up on the Most High. Then guess what? All those years are for nothing. All right. It says, and whosoever shall give to drink one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple. Verily, I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. You know, so it's all according to the most high, man. Because when he comes back, it ain't going to be nothing pretty. Which that leads me to Luke 19 and 27. But those mine enemies, which, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's the Lord talking, man. That's what the world says came here for peace and love. We read already in Matthew 10 what he said. And now we're reading in Luke 19 and 27. All right. Now, who are those enemies, man? Who are the enemies of the Lord? Well, like we read in Luke uh, 11 and 23, he that is not with me is against me. You see that? So don't think that these judgments are all happening for no reason, man. These judgments are happening for a very good reason. And that reason is that wickedness, all right? Wickedness is a, 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 a abroad, man. It's enlarging, all right? It's growing worse and worse. So this is Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that Yahweh hath spoken against you, O children of Israel. Because that's where it starts, man. All right? Against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying... You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, will I punish you for all your iniquities. All right. So to transgress the law really only happens to Israel because that's who the laws were given to, you know, and I'm just going to go straight to the point. This is Romans nine. In chapter uh, chapter nine in verse four. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises. Now, what does that word service mean? That word service means to serve. All right. That doesn't mean that the Most High is going to serve us. That means we serve the Most High. And it's only been given to Israel, you know. So the law was given to us. But since they turned. All right, the other nations turned against Israel. They transgressed by turning against their higher power, which is Israel. You know? So that's why judgment starts at the house of the Most High, which is Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. That's where judgment starts, man. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, will I punish you for all your iniquities? Why do you think all the jails are filled with nothing but so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans? Why do you think that the, the most afflicted are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans? 
All right, the Negroes, the West Indians, the Haitians, Dominicans, Guatemalans, the Panamanians, Puerto Ricans, the Cubans, North American Indians, Seminole Indians, Argentinians, Chileans, Colombians, Uruguayans, Mexican. All right, all these people are the children of the Most High, and that's why we catch the most hell, man. So turn back to your power, man. If you're really tired of the way this earth is, stop protesting. That protesting shit ain't gonna do nothing, man. That all that protesting and all that BS that you do, it ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, it may raise a couple of awareness, but what's really gonna cause something to happen is preaching this truth, preaching this word, man. You know? It says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So can two walk together except they be agreed? No. That's why the Most High has cast away Israel, man. Right now, he's turning back to the prophets, to the ones that are turning the people back to the Father. All right? But two, two, you know, one that's righteous and one that's wicked can't walk together. That's why Lot was delivered from Sodom and Gomorrah. Because he couldn't stand the way they were, man. He was vexed by the way that Sodom and Gomorrah spoke. You see? It says, will, uh, will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? All right. So if two can't walk together, then guess what? Nothing's going to happen. So if we're not being chastised, which is what verse 4 is talking about, if we're not being chastised and the Most High just looks at us and, and allows us to continue in iniquity, allows us to continue in wickedness, then guess what? We're not going to cry up to the Most High. That's why scripture says, surely oppression maketh the wise, went, wise man mad. Which is in the book of... Uh, I can't even remember. I thought it was in Proverbs. Nope. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh the wise one mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. And that's why a lot of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans have fallen into the deceitful tongue of this man, all right, this Edomite, because he has given you these gifts of wickedness. And you're like, oh, okay, now we can do whatever we want. But the wise look at it as oppression, man. And that's why we've woken up and come into this life, man. So in Amos 3 and 4, it says, will a lion, uh, a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? All right. So will we scream out to the Most High if we, we don't need saving? No. And that's why these people haven't screamed out to the Most High because they don't need saving. They think they're good in this life, man. But we need saving. All right. The righteous men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, I'm part of that number. I'm part of the election. All right. But when we read these scriptures and we understand them and we know exactly what predicament we're in, then guess what? We're going to start screaming up to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. We're going to start praying. We're going to start going out to the highways and the hedges, uh, telling our people their transgressions. You see, it says, can a, can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no jinn is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Most High Yahweh have not done it? So the Most High causes all these things to happen, man. You see, it's not random. It's not random shootings. You know, everything happens for a reason, man. Everything happens for a reason, and the Most High is choosing judgment to come out now. And it's only increasing. You saw what happened over there in El Paso? A shooting at Walmart? You see what's happening in Brazil with the forest being burnt down because of this white man wasn't able to kick out the indigenous people from Brazil? To take up resources? So what did he do? He'd rather burn it. All right? If you can't have it, if I can't have it, nobody can have it. That's his mindset, man. And people still thinking, oh, no, it, you know, everything happens for a reason. No, it doesn't. You know, not in the way that they mean. The reason that it happens for is judgment. It's called judgment, man. And that's what the Most High is here for, because all his ways are judgment. You know, 
So Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, which takes me back. All right. This takes me back. And I'm going to end it. You know, that, that's it for that one. But uh, takes me back to Roman 9, verse 4. All right. The services, the service of the Most High. That's what I wanted to get. All right. Let's check this out. The Strong's service. G, 2999. La Traya. La Traya. Right. La Traya. All right, which means service rendered for hire. So who can be hired? Only the Israelites. Any service or ministration. To be part of this ministry means to be an Israelite, man. And that cuts every single, you know, Old Testament only and, you know, no New Testament and, and only Gentiles and all Gentiles mean ev means everybody. No, it doesn't. All right, Romans 9 and 4 goes deeper than what it actually says. And what it actually says is actually really deep. So when you go into the words of Romans 9 and 4, it goes even deeper than how deep it goes, man. It says the service and worship. You see that? Only worship goes to the Israelites of the Most High according to the requirement of the Levitical law. And who are the Levites? Israelites. To perform sacred services. So what we're doing is a sacred service, man. All right. And if you're not with the Most High, if you're not part of this sacred service, then guess what? You're going to be cut off. You know, so let me end it with this one. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means. For the day shall not come. And what, what day is that? The end of times. All right. Salvation. Except there come a falling away first. All right. And that's what happened to us. When we all went into slavery from the 1400s up until now, the 1600s, you know, so on and so forth. And that the man of sin, all right, check that out. It's a man of sin, that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And who is that man of sin? The one that speaks lies, man. All right. So this is uh, Psalms. Let's lock it. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter... I believe it's 58. Psalms 58. Yep, that's it right there. It says, uh, to the chief musician, verse 1, Atashit Mikham of David, do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? So does this world judge righteously? No. All right. Does our congregation, the Israelites, do they speak righteousness? No. Only the prophets right now that are being set up by the Most High. It says, yea, in heart you work wickedness. You see? In heart. In heart. That means in your mind you work wickedness, man. So that ha that what happened to these people is judgment by the Most High. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. You see? The wicked are estranged from the womb. And now this pertains to Esau, Eom. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. All right, so they speak a uh, uh, poison, man. You see? Whenever a so-called white man kills, does a massacre. Oh, we, we need to ask ourselves what we did wrong to, to fail him as a person. But yet a Negro, Latino, Native American do it, and we're wicked. We're nasty. All right? They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which here not which will not hearken to the voice of the charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O Yahweh, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Yahweh. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. All right. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be cut in pieces. And what is that bow? And what is that arrow? The silos and the missiles, man. And that's exactly what's coming to America. All right. So back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, you know. So the law is not done away with. You can't do whatever the hell you want. You still got to go according to scripture. 
for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And we fell away from our power. We went into captivity. We forgot who we were. We call ourselves Latinos, Hispanics. We call ourselves Negroes. We call ourselves uh, 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 Redskins, Native Americans. When really we go back to the sea line of Jacob, which is Israel. It says, and that a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And who is that? It says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the most high. All right. So you so-called Negroes and Latinos and Native Americans. He calls himself above you and we're called after the name of the most high man. Or that is worshipped so that he as. All right. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of the most high, showing himself that he is a God. All right. So these things are going to uh, uh, we're going to come to pass. And now they came to pass, man. You know. So it says, um. Uh, every good work. Let me see. Mm. Let me start off at verse nine. Even him whose coming is after the work working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You see, so all those people that got killed, hurt, and all those people that are going to continue to be killed and hurt. Guess what? The Most High is really judging them, man. And we, we don't have to do anything. All right. We just go out to the highways and byways and prophesy and teach this Bible. All right. But the Most High causes other people to do all these things, man. You know, like we read, shall that be evil in the city and the most high has not done it. And for this cause, the most high shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that's why you guys believe those lies, man. You guys believe everything else except what the scripture says. I haven't been coming out of my own mouth saying, well, I believe this happened for this. I've been doing it through the scriptures, man. And that's how all of us brothers do. We all filter everything through the scriptures, man. And this damn place, Midland, Odessa, all right, has had two brothers, all right? One brother is over there in, in, in uh, San Angelo, but he works over here, you know? And that brother's been going through hell over here, man, because all of y'all are fucking wicked, man. And then y'all go after me right after you go after the brother, man. So this place has been found lacking. This kingdom has been found lacking. It's been found wanting. And that's why this kingdom has been numbered, man. This kingdom has been numbered and it's coming down, man. All right? Because you guys believe the fucking lie, man. Which to be a lie means to go against the truth. And the truth is what? The scriptures, man. All right? Let's look at that word lie. Seudas. All right? Seudas. A lie, conscious and intentional falsehood. In a broad sense, whatever is not what it seems to be of perverse, impious, deceitful precepts. All right. Deceitful, man. That's what this place is. Deceitful. You know, so what's given to us is to turn back to Yahabashim Yahushai. And that's the only way that we can come back to righteousness, man. That's the only way that these killings are going to stop whenever the Lord comes back, because this place is wicked. And these damn shooters are wicked. All right. So with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rokhakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders. And you brothers stay safe out there, man. Keep keep searching the word, man. And keep keep preaching the word. You know, that's the only way that we can stay safe. Shalom.